Is that clear? Yeah. That's why you see God say, come up higher. It's because at that level where you are, you can't really understand what he's saying. Even if you understood, you can't really hold on to those convictions at the plane where you are standing. So as we pray in the spirit, we charge up ourselves on our most holy faith. All right? You will start realizing in the next few weeks that things you were not believing before, you are now believing. There's no issue with your spirit, but your soul will start to catch up with the dimensions that are already possible in your spirit. I know what it means to believe something and then to suddenly not believe the thing and then again to believe it again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Eh. I'll give you a graphic example again. I received at a high plane, all right? I received an instruction to go out into the streets and empty the streets of insanity all over Ibadan. And I remember it was still a teenage church we're pastoring just behind there, this place here. And I shared it with them that we're going to do what is called I. Yeah, I see you. Insanity cleanup. Yes, yes, I see you. Insanity cleanup. And everybody was looking at me weird. I think that was the first problem. Because every time I say the things God is showing me, they're always excited. But for the first time, it was like, you're on your own, no? you know? So I was shocked that I didn't, it didn't meet with excitement and faith. I'm like, ah, I be something is wrong with me. So I kept saying it, that we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And the pressure was very strong in my heart. After a couple of weeks and months of not acting on it, the, the energy backing those, that instruction began to dissipate from my soul. I'm using this example to explain to you what this verse is saying. So eventually weeks became months and months became years. And that thing dissipated. Every time I see mad people on the road, I used to point at them and say, I'm coming for you. So excited, like looking forward to the date. After a while, the drive was gone. Of course, we got distracted with other legitimate ministry activities too. But I always knew, God said this thing, you know. I saw it. I saw us on the streets. I saw us getting them healed. On camera, I saw it. It became a vlog kind of online. Are you following what I'm saying? It's like somebody say, watch me. I'm going to the store. Watch me get. Are you getting what I'm saying? I didn't want to go this detailed because it's about to happen. Uh, but forget, all right? We're coming back to it in future. Very near future. <laughs> so... I saw it and I was excited that Kai to become a trend in the body of Christ and so on and so forth. And I was looking forward to it but didn't act on it on time. And then I became afraid all of a sudden. Then thoughts started coming to my mind, you know, different understandings. The doubt also comes with understanding. Can I explain that? Do you know faith is not in a vacuum? There is understanding that powers faith. That's why it's faith you are convinced is resting on understandings. So when I say get out and the devil is saying I'm not going, why am I sure you are going? They are understandings, right? I'm seated. I say get out, it's get out. It was an understanding that made that man to say, send the word and my servant shall be healed. What was the understanding? You are a man under authority. I also am a man under what? Authority. I say to one, go, he goeth. So an understanding of the fact that my words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, so faith, faith rests on. That's why the more understanding you have, the more functional your faith will be. Yeah. I'm saying that to say, doubt also has what? Understanding, no. There's something you understand that's making you doubt. That's what I'm trying to say. I pray every understanding that you have received. And when it's understanding, it's almost permanent. It's like it's cemented. That's why it's dangerous to listen to persons and they are explaining things that are installing doubts into your system. 
So, of course, Satan began to explain to me why it's not every mad person that will, you know, that will be healed. Say, what about those that maybe somebody of higher authority than you cost them and then you know, no. See, he was explaining to me and I was understanding. Oh, it's true, it's true, it's true. It makes sense. And give me some other understandings why it's not everyone you meet that, you know, every case that can be solved. Some are going through a seven years wilderness period so you cannot interfere with it because so it's true, it's true, it's true. And so on and so forth. Those persons I'm talking to, are you listening to what I'm saying? Okay, I know I'm not talking to everybody right now. So anyways, cut long story short, quickly. Um, 2020, when was the battle last retreat where we had? 2021. 2021, we have battle last retreat and we're praying, 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 praying. And then two or three days to the end of the retreat, we're like, after all this charging, we need to go out and do something. And so we stepped out to evangelize. And the next thing, I received WhatsApp messages on my phone. First mad, first mad person healed. Second mad person healed. Third mad person healed. Fourth mad person healed. Fifth mad person healed. With pictures, they were sending it in. Seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, sixteen insanity cases in two days. Ha! Huh? And I remembered what God said. What was happening to us? We were building up ourselves on what? Our most holy faith. That place, that frequency where there's no doubt, as you start praying the Spirit, you energize yourself on that level. Then thoughts and understandings from that plane will start to seep into your soul. What you thought was not possible before, you now believe is possible. That is what an upgrade is. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. When Maximizing your destiny, a call to fulfill God's purpose. Beloved, today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose. The world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties. But the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. Number one, understanding destiny in God's kingdom. Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29 11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2. Embracing your identity in Christ. To maximize your destiny, you must embrace your identity in Christ. The world will try to define you by your past, your failures, or even by the standards of success it upholds. But in Christ, you are a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's will through prayer and the Word. Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 advises us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, you align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1, 2, 4 encourages us, 
Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel One of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the Kingdom of God. Jesus Himself said in Matthew 20:28. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying Focused on the Eternal Perspective As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. Walking in Obedience and Faithfulness Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. Conclusion. Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen. Please don't hesitate to like and share our contents. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.